Hi, this is Steve Endo, and I'm a Microsoft Dynamics GP MVP. And today I'd like to talk about how you can improve Dynamics GP with just a little bit of VBA. And specifically, I'm going to show you an example of how to use VBA to help users save time while also helping to reduce data entry errors. Let's get started. So I'd like to use VBA to help verify vendor remit to addresses. The scenario is that you receive an invoice from an existing vendor, but you don't see the remit to address directly on that window, so it's not easy to check the address against the invoice without performing additional steps. Now, you can't tell the last time the vendor was updated or when the last invoice was received from this vendor, so you don't know if you had an invoice from them last month or three years ago. And an invoice is sometimes entered into GP without verifying the vendor's current address. And I know this because some of my vendors have tried to send me checks and they're using an address that they have on file from four years ago. So this is how the problem came about and I wanted to see if I can solve it using a little bit of VBA. So how can VBA help? Well, as you'll see, a few lines of VBA can help check the date of the last transaction for the vendor. And the VBA can retrieve and display the vendor remit to address automatically so the user doesn't have to remember to do it and perform the additional steps to do it manually every single time. So let's take a look at how we do this. So here I have Dynamics GP 2016, and if I click on Payables Transaction Entry to open that window, I can pretend to enter an invoice, and I'll choose a travel company. And if I go ahead and enter this invoice, I don't see what the remit to address is, or any of the vendor addresses. And I don't know when the last time I might have received an invoice from this vendor. So I don't know if we have invoices vendor last month or three years ago. So I could theoretically check the remit to address with every single invoice, assuming that I have access to this address maintenance window, which I probably shouldn't if I'm constantly entering vouchers. So how can we make this easier for the user? So let's try a few things. So I'm going to go into Tools and Customize, and I'm going to add this window to Visual Basic. And if you don't have this menu, you may not be licensed for the modifier VBA, or you may not have access. So you may need to speak with your system administrator or have your developer look into this and potentially speak with your partner. But I'm going to go ahead and add this window to VBA, and then I need to add a few fields. So let's go to Add Field to Visual Basic. Actually, I think I only need one, the vendor ID. So let me click on that. And next, if I decide, or if the VBA decides that I need to check this vendor's address, assuming that I can't edit addresses since I'm entering the vouchers, let's assume that the only way I can view the vendor address is to go into the vendor inquiry window. So let's also add this window to VBA. Add current window. And on this window, I'll need to add a couple of fields. So add fields to Visual Basic. Let's add the vendor ID. Let's add the address ID. And I'm going to add this little next VCR button in order to add that field as well. So with that done, let's jump into the VBA editor using Alt F11. And you'll see that I have my two windows here, Payables Transaction and Vendor Inquiry. And through the magic of preparation, let me copy my existing code. I'm going to double click on Payables Transaction Entry. I'm going to go to my Vendor ID field, and I would like to add my code in After User Change so that GP has time to validate that value. So here's the VBA I just pasted in. Let's just do a quick walkthrough of that. I first retrieve my vendor ID from the payables transaction entry window, and I'll use that to query the PM00400 keys table to check when was the last time I had a transaction for this vendor. Give me the max doc date, the most recent document date for any transaction. So in theory, if I received an invoice from this vendor two months ago, I will get a date of two months ago. It's based on the document date, but close enough. 
You could also modify this to check the vendor last modified date or dex row TS field, but for this example, I'm going to work with doc dates. So I have my query. I'm going to retrieve that using a SQL connection. So I'm going to get the last doc date. And while I'm at it, since I'm working with SQL here, let me go and grab the vendor's remit to address ID. So I'm going to go to the vendor master table. And for this vendor ID, I'm going to go grab that vendor's remit to address. So I know which address is the remit to versus the primary. So I'm going to retrieve that value as well. Now that I have those two values, I'm going to take the last document date. I'm going to explicitly convert it to a date format just so I can do some comparisons. And you'll notice up above that if I didn't find any documents for this vendor, just return 1900 so that I have something to work with. So that would presumably mean it's a new vendor and there haven't been any transactions set up. So I'm going to assume the vendor address is correct. You, you may not want to, but for this demonstration, just showing that example. So if it's a brand new vendor, we don't have any documents, let's assume it's a new vendor and let's just exit, everything is fine. However, if there are documents for this vendor, let's see how old they are. So I'm gonna do a calculation to compare the last document date and the current date see how many days ago that was. I'm going to get that day value. If that document is more than 60 days old, which you can adjust that day, maybe you want to go with 30 days, but in this example, if it's more than 60 days old from that last transaction, display a message window. So this vendor has not had a transaction since this date, which was X days ago, and please review the current vendor remit to address and compare it to the invoice address. So we're checking how long ago was it since we last dealt with this vendor, had a transaction, and if it was a while ago, prompting the user to check the address. And then next, to make it easier, because we're assuming the user that enters vouchers cannot edit the vendor address as well for uh, segregation of duties and control purposes, let's open the vendor inquiry window Let's select the vendor ID on that window for them, and let's display the window, and then let's select the remit to address ID. So if a vendor has three addresses, let's make sure to switch over to the remit to address ID. So we're gonna click that little next button until we get to the remit to address ID, and once we're there, we will exit. Okay, so let's give this a try and see how it works. So let's go back in our payables transaction entry window and you'll notice there's a little dot at the end of that window name indicating we have VBA active. And so I'm going to enter my invoice and I'm going to choose a travel company and look that. So we see that this vendor has not had a transaction since May 8th, now it's 293 days ago. And please review the remit to address. Okay, let's do that. And it opens the vendor inquiry window and you'll notice it switches to the remit to address ID. It would initially pull up with primary, but it knows that the remit to address is this ID, so it displays that address for you. Okay, great. The address looks okay, or it doesn't, and we need to deal with that. Let's try another one. Let's try Beaumont Construction. And here we see, wow, it's been 1,400 days ago, so several years old since we've last had a transaction with this vendor. And let's take a look at the remit to address. And there we have this vendor only has a primary address ID. So that's the address that is displayed on the vendor inquiry window. So this kind of takes the, the thinking out of the process so that users don't have to figure out whether they need to check the address. It automatically has some logic to do that. And it makes it easy by just displaying the vendor inquiry window and showing them the address. So that's how quickly you can have a VBA mod in place that saves users time, saves them a little bit of hassle, and potentially improves data entry and reliability of your invoice entry. So that was a basic demonstration, a really simple, easy way to add VBA to Dynamics GP. But what if you have extra requirements? What if you want something a little fancier? You could do things like you could display the vendor's remit to address 
in the dialog. So rather than telling the user to go check the address in a separate window, and even if you display it, maybe you want to retrieve that vendor address and display it directly in the dialog and just ask the user, is this the correct remit to address? Does it match what you see on the invoice? If the user says yes, great, they can proceed to enter the invoice. If the user says no, maybe you could submit a Dynamics GP vendor workflow request. So maybe there's a fancy way to submit that in the GP workflow process, allows that to be handled, and the user can set the invoice aside or route it internally until that address is corrected. You could potentially use Visual Studio Tools and .NET to perform the exact same thing. It's a little more work. You need to have the .NET tools, a little more development experience, and you could do the same thing with Dexterity. However, VBA is simple. It's all contained in Dynamics GP. You don't need separate development tools. So there is some appeal in using VBA over other tools. The deployment may be a little more complicated or a little more of a hassle to manage in a larger environment, but just an example of how you can quickly deploy some VBA in order to improve Dynamics GP. I hope you found this helpful. If you are interested in learning more or have any questions, you can reach me at Steve Endo on Twitter, or you can review other posts on my blog at dynamicsgpland.blogspot.com, or you can reach me at precipioservices.com.